as he is on your left. Andrew Hung is on your right, and it's Counters Company against Grixis. Death's Shadow for round number two. One could say deck A and deck B of the, of the metagame. Really. Yeah, this is what we kind of have to get used to. We're going to see a lot of this. And, you know, two weeks ago, we saw the power of some of these counters companies decks where they just go turn two devoted druid. Mm -hmm. Turn three, you're dead. Yes. You're dead. And in a variety of ways, too. Oh, yeah. So they have, they have so many ways to do it. Yes. Devoted druid plus quarter calling equals you basically dead. Yep. Among many other things. The Eternal Witness kind of ties the room together. So we'll see what Hart and Anthony are able to put together. And hey, Andrew, thanks for casting a discard spell. It makes our job easy. <laughs> Devoted Druid, the Vizier of Remedies, a Horizon Canopy of Forest, a Verdant Catacombs, and a Collected Company. So Hunter is on a mulligan, but his hand's still quite good. Yeah, that's a super solid hand. I mean, you, you got to take the Devoted Druid here, right? <sighs> that's So I don't think you're wrong. Yeah. That's just a weird thing to say. Yeah, just this, the most unassuming two mana O2. Taps for a mana. Yeah. Of course, Inquisition cannot select Collected Company, which is the card Andrew might actually want to select. But Devoted Druid's got to bite the dust, so it's gone. And Hunter Nance just going to play Verdant Catacombs, pass the turn back over to Andrew. Andrew's at 17, of course, with his Death Shadow deck. we got to keep track of that. He has a copy of Thought Seize. He will play. Going to fall down to 15. Nance's draw step was just a land. And I like the ordering of Andrew's spells here. He very potentially wants to take a, a one-mana creature and then also wants to take a powerful card like Collected Company or Court of Calling. And if he had fired off the Thought Seize first, he would feel obligated to take the Collected Company and then the one-mana creature would already be on the board when he plays the Inquisition the next turn. Very true. Very true. Nan's going to sacrifice Verdant Catacombs. He's going to fall down to 19. We'll see what Land Hunter wants to get. Number 18, excuse me, on the SCG Tour leaderboard here in Season 1. Godless Shrine is his weapon of choice. And a moment here. Hunter will take a second turn. Now, we do know he has a play on turn 2. It is the Vizier. And he's drawn a copy of Eternal Witness, which is not so bad. <laughs> I've heard good things. Yes. Not too bad at all. Andrew will draw. Well, Andrew hasn't done much. He's just played a couple discard spells. Pluted Delta is the land here. He's at 15. He can become a lot lower than that if he'd like. Fatal Push in hand here for Andrew. He will play Fatal Push to get rid of the Vizier. And now he'll be sacrificing both fetches, so at least down to 13. <laughs> at least. Getting the job done quick. Yep. Let's make it 11 and 9. Well, okay then. Can you imagine the first time you play against Death Shadow and you don't have any idea what's going on? Your opponent just aggressively dealing himself damage? Yeah, you're, you're just laughing all the way to the bank, yeah. except for... No, there's no money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> there's just a death shadow in the yeah, bank. Yeah, he's and just waiting there for you. <laughs> it's killing you. I see we're going to do a little delving here. Away goes quite a few cards, and it's a Big Gurmag fish. Angler. Yep. Big angry fish here in Gurmag Angler. Just a turn 3-5-5, five, five. no big deal. Hunter has no board and no hand, basically. And this is what the Grixis Death Shadow deck does. Um, he wants to get the early disruption and then get a clock on the board. Uh, the Counters Company deck can generate so much card advantage, but it takes time. Yep. And the key to beating a deck like that is just not giving them the time. Once up, Teeth is going to find a basic forest. Here's an Eternal Witness. Hunter will shuffle and present, but he wants to get a collected company back, and he's going to do just that. Now, I'm going to do a Stubborn Denial main deck check. Three copies here for Andrew Hung. Stubborn Denial. That's correct. Three copies. If you were to give that card a nickname... I would call it Stubborn Denial. Okay. Yeah. I would certainly not call it Stubby D. I would call it Stubborn Denial. Not Stubby D. Correct. Just St making sure. No nickname. Okay. Necessary. Here's an attack for five. For the big fish. Yeah, it's easier if you just call it Stubborn Denial. <laughs> it can't be confused with something else. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And Andrew will pass the turn back. Hunter will draw. 
We know he's got a collective company in hand. Looks like he may have picked up another copy. Oh, yeah. Get in there, Eternal Witness. Fourth land is a Verdant Catacombs. Pass that turn back. I'm a little surprised to see Hunter not not just kind of blocking with his Eternal Witness. Um, you know, getting in... I don't know. It, it, it's such a tough spot. You don't want to make the Death Shadows too big. Obviously, his opponent doesn't have one right now. If he did, it would already be on the board. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, like, Hunter has so much card advantage. So you just want to try to play as many turns as you yeah, can? Yeah, it, it feels like he, he needs to make sure he gets all the value out of these cards. Well, you see your opponent at 9 on the third turn of the game. It's very enticing to want to attack. It, it is. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, kind of giving you the green light there. Yeah, I, I, have, I don't have a lot of work left to go. Nance is going to sacrifice a fetch land here. We're going to see a collective company here in just a moment. Looks like it's probably going to resolve. But we'll allow Nance to search up his land off his Verdant Catacombs. I would think Swamp. As he does check his hand very quickly here. And there's a variety of cards he could hit here, which would just be spectacular for him. Uh, specifically Kitchen Finks. That'd be great. How many is he playing this weekend? The full amount. All four. That'll buy him plenty of time. You know, Eternal Witness plus another guy just just change together more collected companies. Company will resolve. Top six. I think Finks may have been the last one. Two will work just fine. Double Finks. Yep. So Hunter's going to gain four life. Yeah, that's not bad for four mana. No, no, not bad at all. He's also going to get the block. Actually, technically, he should be gaining six life. We also might just see a double block here, truth be told. I think we, could, we could also just see no block. Yeah, I, I was going to say, there's a good chance of the double block or the no block. Yeah. You know, he just gained so much life. Falls down to 11. Here is Death Shadow. And now... We're going to head back over to 100 Ants, who will untap very quickly and draw a card. Now, there's a chance that Hunter wants to just main phase a collected company here. Uh -huh. He does have Fiend Hunter in his deck. That would be a great hit to just clear the way. Yeah, I mean, Township's not bad either. Pretty good with Finks. Yeah. Hunter in a, it, what feels to be a very good spot right now. Yeah, it's funny how Collected Company can just <laughs> wildly swing the game from one side to the other. And it's funny, the card that really turned this game around for Hunter is that Eternal Witness. Yeah. Got back that company, got a body on the battlefield, got to resolve the company. And all of a sudden, this game has changed after his hand got ripped apart by some discard spells. Man, it's thinking about how he can get these last seven points of damage through. Of course, when you're playing against Death Shadow, you don't want to make the Avatar too angry because they can just kill you. And so Nance is going to take a slower approach. And it looks like just pass the turn back over to Andrew. Andrew will untap. He'll draw a card. And we'll see if Mr. Hung can navigate this battlefield. Again, he does have a fatal push in hand. Looks like a fetch land. And unclear on the third card. Yeah, and this is a tricky spot for him to navigate. Um, just fighting through these kitchen things when there's a Gavney Township on the other side is just so messy. Seems very difficult. We'll play a Bloodstained Mire. Death Shadow will come in. 6-6. Six, six. Nance, I think, thinking about just a singular block. Yeah, I can see just blocking with the Finks here. 
firing off the collected company and then having a huge force as Alpha Strike next turn for the win. Might be considering a double block. It looks like he's considering a double block as he taps both kitchen things. Forcing Andrew Hung to have a trick and not too much can really go wrong even if he does. Yeah, not too much can go wrong here like you said. It, it's possible. I don't know, this is such a weird spot. With the Gavney Township, does, does Andrew Hung want to think about only killing one of the, the Finks in combat? Sure. That is under consideration. Hung's going to lose a little bit of life here. Going to make Death Shadow grow via fetch land. It's funny, a lot of the time you'd like to take the full amount from that fetch land, but not right now. No, he, he's got to tread very carefully mm -hmm. here. All right, Finks will die. They'll come back. Double Persist Trigger. And there are the counters. More importantly, Nancel gains some life. He's up to 15. And those black counters will represent minus one, minus one counters on the Finks. They're two ones right now. Let's see what we have here. It's just going to be a Gavney Township activation. So Fatal Push is going to kill one Kitchen Finks. And now Township will resolve which means that Kitchen Finks will lose its Persist counter, and Eternal Witness will grow a little bit into a 3-2. Nance will draw. What Nance is having is difficulty crossing the finish line. Now, that might be a Collective Company in his hand. It might also just be a Duskwatch Recruiter as he's reaching for mana. That's a Horizon Canopy. Here's three mana. Fiend Hunter. It's a good one. It is, and it could be a lethal one. With six power on the battlefield, Fiend Hunter will come down. Here's an attack 4 6. And. <laughs> it was a timely top deck. Hunter Nuns is going to win game number one here over Andrew Hung. Counters company off the back of that singleton Fiend Hunter. Going to yep. win game number one over Grixis Death Shadow. We see Hung giving the little thumbs up there. Yeah, yeah I'll take that. Yeah. Hunter's like, that, you're at six. That's it, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. I, yeah, then I'm dead. I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> We confirm. I am dead. <laughs> Game two, about to be underway. Let's take a look at some sideboards here, and these players have some diverse ones. We're going to start with Andrew Hung, who has three Leyline of the Void, two Collective Brutality, two Ceremonious Rejection, and here come the one-ofs, an Anger of the Gods, Kozilek's Return, Engineer Explosives, Liliana and the Last Hope, by force. Good way to beat up Affinity. Well, Counter Squall is a Static Caster, and Dreadbore, a lot of options here for Andrew. Yeah, if you listen to Jerry T's podcast, you've heard him talking about by force as a singleton out of his board for over the last week. Okay. Um, you know, it's only one red, and it can blow up a lot of cards. So, you know, pretty solid card there. Obviously not for this matchup. Uh, collective Brutality is great in this matchup. It picks off the, the early little creatures. It peels away Collected Companies, uh, Quarter Callings. So that's definitely just a, a great utility card that should come in. Anger of the Gods, Kozilek's Return. Uh, Potentially the Engineer Explosives and the Liliana, the Last Hope. There's a lot of one toughness creatures over there. Is it Static Casters? Find one. Uh, the only question is, can Andrew Hong side in all of these cards and still execute his game plan? That is the big question because he does have a lot of haymakers to bring in. Yeah. There's a lot of attractive cards here, but can he bring all those cards in and still, as you said, do what he wants to do? Yep. I think that's the big question. We'll find that out here as he is deep in the tank with the sideboard. For Hunter Nance, I think we're going to ask the same question. You take a look at his sideboard. Two Tireless Tracker, two Path to Exile, and a lot of one ofs in Devour Flesh, uh, particularly for this matchup. Abrupt Decay, Selfless Spirit, Linvala Keeper of Silence, Orzhov Pontiff, Eilon of Rhetoric. That's, of course, the rule of law on wheels. And even Mind Sensor, Kataki's Ward Wage, the big game Hunter. Get it? Hunter, big game hunt. Never mind. Kasai, Pride Mage, and a Scavenging News. What do we like, Craig? I like a lot of these cards. Um, Hunter, Hunter's really positioned his sideboard here with a lot of good creatures. When you're playing Collected Company, you don't want to bring in a whole lot of spells and, you know, cast Collected Company and not hit a bunch of creatures. Uh, the Devour Flash, great in this matchup. Uh, depending on how grindy Hunter wants, I can see him uh, shaving a lot of the combo cards and just bringing in some of these grindier cards. Tireless Tracker. Uh, the Selfless Spirit is great if he's expecting these um, Pyroclasm effects out of his opponent. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and a big game hunter, obviously very good when all of your opponent's creatures are huge. Wow. Scavenging Ooze, very good against the Grix Grixis Death Shadow deck. So I can see a lot of these cards coming in. Both players have quite a bit of sideboarding to do, and they are already getting ready here to shuffle up for game number two. So while they do that, Remember, Andrew Hung going to be on the play. We are going to talk about StarCityGames.com Game Night, the very popular promotion. We want to thank all of our tournament organizers and all of you players for making this promotion everything that it has been over the past couple of years. Now, for the month of June, Murderous Red Carp. He's so silly. I know. He's an aquatic assassin, is the Red Carp. Got a little of fish there. Gotten some nice work done. Has the Goblin Rogue in the month of July. Yeah, he's wearing a salmon hat. Like, you gotta love everything about that guy. I like the Murderous Red Carp. I like the Goose of St. Traft as well for the month of July, pins and tokens. But right now, the leader on the game night leaderboard for the Creature Collection easily. <laughs> Our good friend Puggernaut. Oh, man. That'll be available in August. Artifact Creature 6-6 six, six Beast will not be walled off with a Puggernaut. Go.StarCityGames.com slash game night for more information so your store can get signed up today to get those awesome pins and tokens, as Hunter Nance is going to go down to at least six cards, though that did not hurt him in the first game. Why wasn't the Pugger not a 5-3? There's no 5-3 token. Sure. See, they have to be usable. Yeah. Now, what's the 6-6 artifact creature token? I don't know. <laughs> but I feel like there probably is one. I'm sure there is. I'm sure, I feel like there probably is one. Uh, Hunter's going to take a look at his... Next set of cards. We'll learn more about number 18 on our SCG Tour leaderboard. The 23-year-old from Raleigh, North Carolina, with six open top eights. A couple runner-up finishes as well. Just doesn't have that title just yet. He wrote a guide on optimal ordering strategies at Cookout, which is a restaurant down here. I, I actually believe that to be true. You've never been to a Cookout before, I've have not you? been to a Cookout. Yeah, yeah. They don't mess around at Cookout. Man. Why can't I just show up and order what I want? No, because so, you should try to optimize everything you do. Just everything in life. Just overthink it. No, overthink is the wrong word. Optimize it. Oh. Optimize it. Play perfect if you can. Sure, I can't just enjoy this meal. No. No. You have, you have to perfect it. Yes. Hunter will order for you, which is important. A Serum Visions is how Andrew's going to start. Cookout's pretty dope, I got to say. It's oh. a pretty good place to eat. All right, is that happening? I'm trying to keep it in check. Okay. Right I'm trying to, try, try to, trying to keep it healthy, keep it lean right now. How'd that work out last night? I don't want to talk about last night. <laughs> I don't want to talk about last night at the local Buffalo Wild Wing. Okay? I don't want to talk. Look, I can't. I'm a cast game on. I have no control. There's nothing I can do. I mean, you are telling the truth there. I, I have no control over anything when the Cavs game is on. Do you ever just yell at random strangers in the I bar? I try not to. But I you try. do. They start it. They started. I never engaged. They started. They, they shouldn't have gone there if they didn't want to get yelled That's at by true. you. That's not true. They don't have to say anything to me. Just let me enjoy my game in peace. Thought sees. Here from Andrew Hung. Now it looks like Hunter's got a bunch of sideboard cards here. It looks like a tireless tracker and a big game Hunter. Eternal Witness. And that white card's an even mind sensor. Even mind sensor yeah. came in. So he's got a little bit of everything in the lands to cast them all. You see the big game Hunter. Ah, Andrew wants to read that on, huh? We can take a little look, Skipu. Do you know the creature type on Big Game Hunter? How many creature types is it? I'm not going to answer that. Three. You're telling me it's three. Probably three. Three is a lot. Okay. Do I know the creature types? Uh, no. Can you give me one of the three? Human. Correct. Don't look. All right. Can War you give me? Warrior. Wrong. Tracker. No. You can search for it via mechanic that searches for other things. Oh, uh, he's a mercenary. No, try other one. Oh, he's a rebel. Correct. Man, I'm so bad at and this. He's also an assassin. He's an assassin. I was blocking Craig's view he for those of you at home. I did not let him look. Uh, from Planner Chaos is the big game hunter. I'm a big fan of that design. Of the big game hunter specifically? Yeah, I like this card. I think it's a cool design for a card. How about all the creature types? A lot of jobs to do. I'm not sure I would give it that many jobs, but he's a rebel, and he kills big creatures, does the big game hunter. Mostly going to try to kill Gurmag Angler and Death Shadow in this matchup. Yeah. I'm not sure how much Andrew can do about that. Good thought sees it away. Tracker, Avon Mind Center, big game hunter, Godless Shrine Swamp, as Andrew's life total is getting rather low here via all these fetch lands and discard spells. He don't mind. 
Hunter's got this super slow hand. This feels a lot like game one, honestly. Uh, it, it, without a collected company, it's, it's not the same game. Okay. You know, the two cards in Hunter's hand, like, sure, maybe you can kill one fatty with the, the big game Hunter. Mm -hmm. that even Mind Sensor is just not... Not going to do not it. Not very threatening. No. You know, it only has one toughness. It, it's going to succumb to any removal spell on the opponent's deck. The only thing that I like about the even Mind Sensor, because I don't think the text is going to be very relevant, I like that it flies. Yeah. I will give it that. The air is a good place to be against this deck. We have seen Death Shadow variants play Lingering Souls at the beginning. But a lot of people have moved away from that. So a flyer could actually be quite good here. So Rise and Canopy is the draw. Yeah, I think all of, the death, all of the Death Shadow decks have been updated to not care about Lingering Souls nearly as much. Mm -hmm. um, they've got some Pyrocosm effects out of the board. Almost all of them have Liliana the Last Hope, which is great against Lingering Souls. Of course. Uh, the is it Staticaster, Maelstrom Pulse, depending on the colors you're playing. It, it, everyone's ready for that card now. Got the Shrine, and there's the Battlefield Tap there for Undernance. Pass that turn back. So we go back to Andrew Hung, who's at 10, so Death Shadow is online. Let's see what this is going to be. Thought Scour is going to target himself. Two cards are going to go to the graveyard here. Serum Visions in a land, and draw a card. Actually, no, I take that back. I think that's a Stubborn Denial, not a land. And that could end up mattering because old Snapcaster Mage. Scalding Tarn, pass that turn back. So no creature here for Andrew Hung just yet, as Hunter Nance will draw a card. Remember, Hunter is up a game, able to steal that first one, thanks to Fiend Hunter. Now he'll just play a land and pass that turn back. And Andrew's got to just be sitting on a mess of removal and Snapcaster Mages and stuff like that. It does feel that way. It's possible he has a fatty and he's just waiting for one more discard spell. Take care of the big game, Hunter? Yeah. Well, he played a Swamp. He does have a Snapcaster Mage. It looks like he's going to lead out with Snapcaster Mage. Going to use a Swamp and a Watery Grave to cast that one. It's kind of funny making your opponent discard Big Game Hunter. <laughs> Big Game Hunter does it all. A little <laughs> just, madness. It's just a free 1-1. One, one. Going to target Thoughtseize. This could be what you're talking about, trying to clear the path. Yeah. There's that extra discard spell. Andrew Hung wants to know what the heck is going on over there. You passed a couple of draw steps. Here's Aven Mind Sensor. Will we have a response? Keep in mind that is a Scalding Tarn over there for Andrew. And he will sacrifice that, fall down to at least nine, potentially seven. Yeah, if he has a Death Shadow or one of the Delve Fatties. He's going to be going to seven here because he needs the Black Source. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Scavenging Ooze, not a terrible one. Hey, you see the Ooze, the Big Game Hunter, and the Horizon Canopy. Ooze doesn't look too bad. But is he trying to clear the path? And you got to take a look at the life total here, by the way. <laughs> uh, five, huh? All right. Yeah. Big game hunter down. Five is not a lot. No. No, this is what we're talking about, where having a flyer here in this situation is really, really nice. Now, Andrew does have a copy of Death Shadow that he's going to play, so he was just doing some work to clear the path for that. Now, Hunter Nance is going to quickly untap. He'll draw... Did not get a great look at what he drew. Here comes Aven Mind Sensor. Andrew's going to fall down to three. Horizon Canopy. Now, this is a card like Selfless Spirit. There's a Scavenging Ooze. Pa uh, Path's huge. Yeah, that's a really good one here. It's a great draw. Well, and he gets it while his opponent's tapped out. Mm -hmm. Saw that Stubborn Denial in Andrew's hands. Ooh, even Mind Sensor is on the battlefield. So Ooh. Andrew instinctively went to go search. So we'll have to try to correct this game state here in just a moment. I actually totally forgot that even Mind Sensor yeah, was out there to do that. So 
easy mistake to make. It is. It felt like the time for that ability had come and gone. Yep. There's a lot of focus on it earlier with the fetch land. So we have our judge here having a little conversation with these players about how this will be resolved. As soon as that judge finishes making the ruling, we'll have our wonderful table spotter let us know what the ruling is, and we'll communicate it to you at home. As they try to repair this game state. Maybe flyers are the way to go. I mean, you are right. They do have access. They do have access to Anger of the Gods, Kozlek's Return, all that stuff. So they are, it seems like, pretty well insulated against flyers and Fatal Push plus something can take care of your Mind Sensor. But yep. that Mind Sensor might, it's, I, I say go the distance. <laughs> and that's two attacks. Yeah, two to three yeah, attacks. Yeah, so. it, might, it might cross the finish line here. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. We're gonna, they're going to get that game state repaired. Uh, you guys can look at us instead of looking at that. And you can also look at what the Puggernaut token is. Ooh. Architect of the Untamed, Craig. Sure. Spend a little energy. Yeah. Create yeah. a 6-6 six, six colorless boost. It's a bit of a stretch, I think, for the token. It feels like there should be some sort of Juggernaut token at this point, right? I think, I think. I don't know. Look, I don't design the cards. I just talk about them. Okay, I don't know. Uh, Should have just been a 5-3. Maybe, maybe. We're going back down. They're good to go. Top four cards. Okay. So they're going to shuffle and then look at the top four. That'll clear this whole thing up. Got it. Okay, so clear it up, <laughs> even, clear it up even more. He missed on the top four from the even mind sensor. And now, shuffling. Good. Cedric, Easy. what happened here? I don't know. Draw a card. Don't lose the mind sensor. I mean, it, Andrew's in a, a semi-precarious spot here with this three life total. But he is one to two removal spells away from just being in complete control of the game. Yeah. Here's Fatal Push on the ooze. Huh. Interesting. Better have an answer for that flyer, my friend. Noble Hierarchs in that deck? Oh, yeah. Some number? Two? Okay. Two of. A lot of ways to put a Noble Hierarch in the battlefield to end this one. Here's an attack for two. Pass the turn back. Quick draw. What do we have here? Crack the horizon canopy right away, Will Nance. In. All right. Terminate's going to try to take care of the flyer. That'll work. Windswept Heath and passing the turn. Andrew Hung is alive, ladies and gentlemen. Back in the driver's seat. He's drawn a fetch, I believe. Here's an attack for two. He has a stubborn denial in hand. <laughs> Not the <laughs> most impressive. No. No. Stubborn denial right now. Not quite. But he only needs eight more attack steps to close <laughs> this game out, so... Or one Death Shadow. <laughs> He'll draw. In for two. Nance is going to fall down to 13. Hung with another copy of Terminate in hand as well. Hunter's going to draw. He needs a spell. He needs one bad. And this is another list that I'm looking at. No Lightning Bolt. Yeah, this is starting to become ubiquitous now. Yes. People are moving away from Lightning Bolt, and everyone's moving towards Fatal Push because you've got to be able to kill Death Shadow. In for two more. Go snap, Caster Mage, go. <laughs> Nance down to 11. <laughs> Steam Vents under the battlefield tap. Pass that turn back. Hunter Nance is going to go reaching for some lands. Three and four. Eclectic Company is a very powerful magic card. <laughs> That's the one you want here, right? Uh, yes. And Stubborn Isle cannot counter that one as much as Andrew Hung would like to. And his, his deck is so full of hits here. As long as it's not a bunch of mana creatures. Anything with power is great. Yep. Kitchen Fink's spectacular. Eternal Witness is awesome. Eternal Witness is, is yeah, really, really good. A tireless tracker would just be insane. Boy, it looks like Hunter Nance has very quickly found two creatures. Let's see what they're going to be. 
You mentioned Cliff. <laughs> Not our first rodeo. Yeah. Tireless Tracker and Eternal Witness are the hits here for Hunter Nansen. Those are both fantastic. Ever run well? <laughs> me? No. 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 You? Probably. <laughs> but me? No. I can only imagine what it's like. Here's a terminate. Got to take care of the tracker. Hunter Nance might have a response here by sacrificing some number of fetch lands to be able to generate some clues. So he'll sacrifice the first fetch. And he'll sacrifice the second fetch. So he's going to be given two clues here. We'll see what Lance Hunter does want to search up. But he just wants to make sure he gets those two clues. And he might search for some basics. So the Lance enter the battlefield untapped. We will find out soon enough. But once again, the power of Clutcher Company flexing its muscles, showing why it is one of the best decks in this format. Yeah, I think I would have liked a couple untapped lands there. Um, you know, just, just cashing one of these clues right away. This game's not going to go a whole lot more turns one way or the other, so you, you got to get that value while you can. Yeah, he had a couple. Of, he's got four basics in his main this week and two forests, a swamp, and a plains. Two of them already on the battlefield, so he did have the ability to search up at least one and could have taken some damage from a Ravnica Shock land. But in the meantime, here comes Eternal Witness. Andrew down to one. Uh, can't go much lower than that, my friend. <laughs> oh, no. Don't know. Devoted Druid. And Hunter's exposing himself here. Well, he's exposed himself to Stubborn Denial now. To Stubborn Denial. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, I would have sequenced those way differently. Yeah, he could have led with the Denial. And then cast the Devoted Druid. Or led with the company. That's what, yeah, yeah. yeah. Led with the company and then cast the Devoted Druid. We, yeah, we work ourselves into a different game here where if uh, if Andrew draws a creature, he's kind of, he's sort of stabilized. I mean, he'll get another turn. Yeah. Also, if he's drawn a copy of Kozak Return or something like that, and I don't know if he's drawn anything of relevance here. He's drawn an interesting one. What has he drawn? It looks like Street Wraith. Ugh. I mean, next turn, that's a 3-4 body. Yeah, maybe it's a street wraith. It might be a Gurmag Angler. Oh, it's, oh, it's collective brutality. That's actually a great one. Okay, no, that's good. That's good. Okay. That's a great one. So he gets to kill that and get a little bit of life first troubles up to three. Yep. Can attack. Yep. Keep the clock going. Yep. Discard a fetch land that's no good to you anymore. Yep. In. All right. All right. That's, three to five. That's so much more exciting than a street wraith. <laughs> Now, Hunter's got some big draws, Vizier among them. He'll start by sacrificing a clue. Now he'll draw another card. Remember, Andrew Hung is empty-handed. Clutch Company is oh, man. a really good card. He's running hot. <laughs> Top six picks to click. Let's see how Hunter Nance does. An Eternal Witness is among those cards. Looks like two hits again. Might be two Eternal Witness. Two Eternal Witness or Witness and Finks, I believe. That's good, too. I mean, it, it all works here yeah. for him. Witness plus Finks, get back company. Yeah, just make sure you don't stick those cards into your hand. Yep. Man, it's back in the driver's seat now. Well, and you see the power of just, just chaining witnesses into companies, into witnesses into companies. That's why the deck plays four copies of Witness. It's so good in this deck. Andrew Hung. He's only got one card to work with. We'll see if it was a good one, because he's spreading those five lands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go get him, Snapcaster Mage. Good block, good block. <laughs> Nance is going to go up to nine. Is it potentially a K command? Not sure. Devoted Druid. Put a counter on this. This is going to be to crack the clue. Yep. So Hunter will draw a card. Nance is untapping. He's drawing. Remember, he's got to collect a company in hand.
Now he might have something to do real quick here. Two mana spell that he would cast before combat? It looks like he just says, I'd rather attack first. Remember, this could be something like a Kozlex return. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Andrew Hung was hoping he'd get more with that. And he almost did. Yeah. He got close. Hunter almost played some things pre-combat. Gonna float a green. The board has been wiped. Now here comes Collective Company. I like this. That's heads up play. Yep. Top six. Again, it's very difficult for Hunter Nance's deck to miss in situations like this. Scavenging Ooze and Vizier are certainly hits. It all works. It sure does. Another copy of Collective Company in hand here for Nance as well. And now <laughs> he's going to play Kitchen Finks. Gain a little bit of life now, <laughs> Will Hunter. A every turn is just bad, from bad to worse for, for poor Andrew over there. Well, draw Anger of the Gods. And it's just going to very quickly draw and pass. That's what it's going to take right now is it a copy of Anger of the Gods. Here come the knuckleheads, and that is going to do it. Hunter Nance is going to win this match here over Andrew Hung. Two games to zero. Connor's company will take care of Grix's death's shadow.